Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hello and welcome to Just the Bible Will Do podcast with Pastor Jonathan Smith. I want to take this moment and say thank you so very much for tuning in to the podcast today. And we hope that something that we say will be a blessing and a help to you as we go through the podcast today. If you have, are a new listener to the podcast today, I hope and pray that you will send me an email at pastorsmith387 at gmail.com and uh, let me know that you're listening. If you ever have any questions or concerns about anything that I have taught or am currently teaching on, um, I will respond to those. Um, just keep in mind that I will not argue the Word of God with anyone. We're here to teach it. If we disagree in certain areas, we'll agree to disagree and we'll keep moving. If I am doctrinally wrong on something, I will make an apology on that. Uh, The Bible does say study to show ourselves approved, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. That way a workman needeth not to be ashamed. And when I think about that, it's important that you and I study the word of God and make sure that each and every one of us are quick to understand and to learn the Word of God. We'll get started today with the Word of Prayer. My dear Gracious Father, Lord, we want to thank you, God, for another opportunity to gather around your Word today. Lord, we pray today, Lord, that you will help us just not be hearers of your Word, but God, let us be doers of your Word today. God, we pray today if there be anyone that is lost and undone without you, Lord, we pray that you will save them before it's eternally too late. God, we pray for those that are sick and afflicted today. Lord, we pray that you will touch them and help them and heal them if it be thy will. And God, if there be someone that's listening today that's discouraged, Lord, we pray that you will encourage them. And all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. We are picking up uh, in James chapter number 3. James chapter number 3. And we're going to be dealing over the next few weeks on the Christian and his behavior. And um, today today will be a, probably a little shorter podcast than normal because I want to pick up just in verse number one. Um, there was some there was quite a bit in verse number one, and but once we get down to verse number two through verse number twelve, where James is dealing with the tongue, there is a lot to go over with there, and I didn't feel like that I would have the time. Uh, in today's podcast to be able to cover um, the parts of the tongue that I want that would need to be covered. Um, So today as we deal with this we're going to deal with the Christian and his behavior and as an introduction to this um, it is very important that you and I as believers realize that our behavior does matter. Um, it does. It is important how you and I act and how you and I conduct ourselves. And if we say that we are a Christian and we and we don't act like Christians, then your behavior will speak louder than your words. Remember this as a Christian today. You're not just representing yourself, but you're representing other Christians. You're not only representing other Christians, but m- most importantly, you're representing Christ. And Christ today needs not a bad name, but Christ today needs people that will lift his name high and lift it up. He needs people today that will respect his name, that will learn to use his name properly. We've got so many different people today that is misusing the name of Christ. They're saying that they're Christians. They say that they go to church. They say that they do the right things. 
but at the end of the day, friend, they misrepresent who Christ truly is. And I believe that's where James is going with when he deals with the Christian and his behavior. Not only, number one, does your actions speak louder than your words, but number two, your words can be helpful or hurtful. As a pastor, this is something that I have preached to myself many, many times. I went to the pulpit before, aggravated, frustrated about certain things that is going on around me. And when you get into those places, you have to realize that your behavior is at stake when you get to the pulpit. You have to realize that you're not there to preach off of your emotion but you're there to preach the gospel. You have to realize that you're not there to preach your personal opinion, but you're there to preach the gospel. You have to realize there you cannot reach everyone, but you can only reach the ones that won't help. And you have to realize as a pastor and as a preacher today, friend, not everyone that you'll preach to will receive the help that they need, but most of some will turn away. Um, some will turn away and uh, from the truth, and they'll walk away from the truth, but it is important today that us as men of God realize that we have to give an account to Christ for ourselves, and if you don't get anything else out of this thing today as a Christian, as a preacher, as a teacher, remember this, that your behavior does matter. I was in a place this week, and this person professed to be a Christian, and they were talking about how um, they were talking about a race division and there may be but as a Christian today as a true Christian today you and I do not see white black red yellow we see everyone as created equal in the eyes of God and we love everyone equally regardless if we regardless if we agree with them on everything regardless if they have the same type of shoes the same type of car or they even go to the same type of schools that we go to but it is our behavior as a christian to love one another the bible says that we are to love our neighbor as ourself who is our neighbor? I don't know where all of this is coming from. This has nothing to do with the lesson today, but I'm just going to give it to you. All right. Who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is the person that is next to us, regardless if they live next door to us, someone we pass in the grocery store, someone we pass in the hallways at school, someone that we see on Zoom, on FaceTime. That person is our neighbor. And you and I today, friend, must be willing to love them as we love ourselves. Uh, you and I today, if we're going to make a positive difference and a positive impact in this world, you're going to have to do a couple things. Number one, you're going to have to be saved by the grace of God. Number two, you're going to have to live a life I like Christ would live. You say, preacher, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. But one thing he does expect us to do is to behave and act like his children. Uh, thirdly, today, we're going to have to learn to love like Christ. Do you say, preacher, it's hard to love everyone? Christ didn't love everyone. How can I say this the right way? Christ didn't love everyone. Christ loves everyone. Don't get me wrong there. But there are some people that he, I believe he loved from a distance. I believe there was people that got on the nerves of Jesus. He was a perfect man, but he was still a human. Uh, I believe there was people that got on his nerves, people that aggravated him, people that frustrated him. But at the end of the day, he still loved them. And today, friend, as Christians, if we're going to make a difference, number one, we're going to have to be saved. Number two, we're going to have to live like Christ. Number three, we're going to have to love like Christ. Number four, what's your fourth point on this in the Christian's behavior? We ain't even got to James chapter number three yet, so just hang with me. Number four, we're going to have to forgive like Christ. Christ gave ultimate forgiveness to every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that has accepted him as their Lord and Savior. When Christ was hanging on the cross, he cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But through it all and at the end of it all, Christ still forgave us. And I'm grateful today for the forgiveness of Christ. 
Christ. So now let's get into James chapter number 3. That was a brief introduction on the Christian and his behavior. James has a lot to say about the Christian and his behavior. Actually, James almost takes two full chapters and deals with the Christian and and his behavior. Number one today, we're going to deal with James chapter number three, verse number one. The Bible says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. I want to deal today, number one, I believe as James has dealt with, is sin in the life revealed. How does he reveal the sin in the life? Number one, James deals with the sin in the mouth here in verses number one through 12. But number one, if you're taking notes at home, he is dealing with the word about the teachers. James now goes to a thorough discussion of the believer's behaviors. He begins with the sin of the tongue. And because teachers do a great deal of talking, he begins with them. Notice this. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. James here, I believe, has two observations when he deals with a word about the teachers. We know that Paul, when he got, talked about preachers and bishops, he set forth a list of um, a list of qualifications for that. James here is talking about teachers. He said, number one, don't multiply teachers. My brethren, be not many masters. Let me say something today. Not everyone has the ability to teach. Not everyone has the ability and the patience to teach. Not everyone has the ability and the time to take and study what needs to be studied in order to teach. If you're going to teach something, number one, you cannot be a lazy person. Number two, you have to be willing to learn yourself. Number three, you have to be open-minded. Number four, you have to think like other people will think. You can't think through it like you would normally think through it. But you have to think, well, if I explain it this way, if I say it this way, will they understand it? From time to time, I have to go on YouTube and look up videos on how to do something, whether it be to a vehicle, whether it be to something electronics or something like that. And sometimes I have to watch multiple videos to find what I'm looking for because not everyone who makes the video makes it simple and understanding not everyone has the ability to come on and just teach the way that it needs to be taught. That's why today I believe James gave the warning not to multiply masters. This word masters right here is the same word that we get the meaning teacher or a doctor. This word occurs 58 times in the New Testament. The Lord himself was addressed by this title 31 times and used this title of himself eight different times. And when you think about that today, if you want to be a teacher, you're going to have to learn to teach like Christ. One thing that I've said as a young pastor um, starting out in my ministry, it is my duty and responsibility to preach the gospel and the word of God to every man, not to hurt anyone intentionally, but to help everyone who wants help. And that is key today. Not everyone that you will teach will want to be helped. Not everyone who comes to church, wants to be saved by the grace of God. Not everyone that walks into your classroom, Sunday school teachers, wants to learn about the things of God. Not everyone that comes to church on Wednesday nights wants to learn more about the Lord. Have you realized that there are some people that only come to church because of a status? There's some people that only come to churches because that's what mama has taught them to do. That's what daddy has taught them to do. And that's a good thing. 
but we should come around the house of God ready and willing to learn. And us that are teachers in the house of God, we have a great responsibility that you and I come prepared to teach the word of God. All right, moving on. He said, don't multiply teaching. And then not only this, he said, don't misunderstand teaching. Now, this is something that I will, that will take some time. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. When we think about that today, teachers are under a special obligation not only to practice what they preach, but also to ensure that what they teach is true. When we think about that today, we have to be willing to understand the context of what we are teaching about. We have to we have to understand that number one, the era, the era or the time frame that the writer is writing in. Number two, we have to understand the mindset that the writer is writing in. Context is important when it comes to teaching the Word of God. Context is important when it comes time to teach history, when it comes time to teach math, when it comes time to teach science, when it comes time to teach social studies. Whatever you may be teaching today, uh, context is important. If me and you have a conversation and you tell me, hey, I will sell you this piece of land and the, and the piece of land is five acres, and I will sell it to you for $20,000, and I go out and tell people that I bought land from you for $20,000 an acre, what I have done is taken what you told me out of context. And you know how angry that makes you when you find out what someone has taken, what you said, out of context, and they've twisted it all up? I remember we used to play a game as kids called Gossip. And we would whisper something in each other's ear, and by the time it got to the end, nine times out of ten, it was completely messed up. And when I think about that today, I think about those that who are trying to teach the Word of God and they don't understand it, and they get up and they make a big mess out of it. It is important today, friend, to realize that we will receive the greater condemnation. James here is not only telling us that it's a solemn thing to teach and to make sure what we teach is true, but he also said teachers will be held accountable for their doctrines. He said tonight that sincerity is not enough. We must be right. When I think about that today and think about the doctrines, we not only must understand the context, but number two, we must teach sound doctrine. I remember Paul writing unto young Timothy, talking about that he must teach a sound doctrine. When I think about that today, we've got a lot of people who call themselves Bible preachers and Bible teachers, but yet they what they are saying and what they are doing is not sound biblical doctrine this past week i was on social media and if you and if you if you follow social media very much you'll probably know who i'm talking about but there was this so-called preacher that was up preaching, and he made this statement. He said, bless God, if you are a Democrat, I don't want you in my congregation. And I, want, and I want to say this today, friend. God doesn't care if you're Republican or Democrat. What God cares about is if you've given your heart and life to Christ. And if, if you have to be a Republican in order to be a member of certain churches, then they are not a church. They are a social club. If you have to be a Democrat to be a member of certain churches, they are not a church. They are a social club. And they're no different than a political party. I want to say today, friend, God didn't say you must be a Republican in order to be saved. God didn't say you must be a Democrat in order to be saved. God didn't say you must be an independent in order to be saved. But God said that all of us, every man is a sinner. Every man's come short of the glory of God. And that every man must repent. And that every man must be born again. 
And I want to say today that being a Republican will not get you into heaven. Being a Democrat will not get you into heaven. Being an Independent will not get you into heaven. But it is the blood of Christ which cleanseth man from all unrighteousness. And it's the blood of Christ that saves man from all of his and her sins. It's the blood of Christ that will redeem you out of your sin and will allow you to be a Christian. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost of God on the inside of you will direct your paths and the Holy Ghost inside of you will bear witness with my spirit that ye are the children of God. So that was not sound doctrine that that man preached. I want to say today, friend, that sound doctrine has nothing to do with anything outside of the Word of God. Sound doctrine did not come in the 40s and 50s when and 60s when men and women when men would get up and preach that your hair should be a certain length that you're that you must wear dress a certain way to come to church and that you can't do this and you can't do that a lot of what they taught and preached was not in the word of god it's still not in the word of god and what they were teaching was legalism instead of salvation by grace through faith and because of that today friend unfortunately there's going to be a lot of blood on their hands because there were people that were members of their church and their hair was always a certain length. They always dressed a certain way. They didn't have this and they didn't have that in their homes. And those people thought that they were going to heaven based on those works. And it, those people died in their sins and went to hell because they thought that, that what they were doing was enough to get them to heaven. And yet we had men of God that or so-called men of God that missed the boat when they should have been preaching salvation and letting the Holy Spirit do the separating, but instead they were trying to separate the sinner, but never preach salvation to the sinner. What a dangerous thing that that is today, that you and I will face as teachers and preachers of the Word of God, a greater condemnation. James here said that we must be right. I believe James had in mind here controversies among teachers about the relative merits of faith and works. He could have been targeting those teachers who substituted words for works. Teachers are necessary But we do not need the kind of teachers that Paul warns against. Preacher, what kind of teachers does Paul warn against? 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse number 3 through 4. For a time will come when they will not endure. Notice this, sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Be careful when you get to hear that teacher. And boy, everything he does is paints a pretty picture. And they shall turn their ears away from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. James, with his strong ties to the synagogue, had probably in mind the open platform policy that was common in the synagogues. This custom made room for visitors and others to speak to the congregation. If you went over to Matthew chapter number 12 and verse number 9, Mark one thirty nine and Luke 6.6, 6, you would find out that the Lord Jesus himself took advantage of the open mic policy. Paul took advantage of it in Acts chapter number 13, verse number 15, Acts chapter number 13, verse 45, and Acts chapter number 18, and verse number 6. Notice this here, there was much profitable teaching. No doubt did result from this system but sometimes it would allow mediocre teaching and also an abundance of self-appointed teachers people who only thought that they had the gift of teaching can I say something today not every person let me say let me see if I can word this right not every preacher will be the same not every teacher 
you'll be the same. Just because you're a certain style of preacher does not make you better than any other preacher. And because you're a certain style of teacher, it does not make you better than any other teacher. At the end of the day, all of us must give an account to God. Preacher, how do you know? Well, I believe I'll tell you in Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 36, and I'm done. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. You know, there's been times that I have went to church, I have heard preachers preach, or so-called preach, and all they did was got up there and told story after story after story after story and never shared the gospel. There have been times that I've heard teachers get up and teach and you, you was hoping that they would teach the word of God for thus saith the Lord. And what they've done is they've got up there and they've told a bunch of jokes and they've laughed and they've cut up. And don't they realize that the time that they wasted in doing all of that that they must give an account to God for. Every idle word that they've got up there and spewed out of their mouth, they must give an account for. James reminded us tonight, today, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. If you're a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, and you're listening to this podcast today, one thing that you should pray is, Lord, Help me, number one, be an effective vessel in your ministry. Because, God, this ministry is not about me, but, God, this ministry is all about you. God, I pray that you will protect my mouth from saying something that I shouldn't say. Protect me from saying those idle words that I'm going to give an account for. God, I pray that most of all, when I finish teaching, that everything that I've said and done will bring glory and honor to you. And God, I don't care if they know my first name, if they know my last name, if they notice what suit I'm wearing or what or how I'm dressed. But God, one thing that I want them to realize is how great and how powerful and how true and how just and how sovereign and how awesome that you are. Because God, this teaching is not about me, but it's all about you. My dear Grace Shape Father, Lord, thank you for allowing us to reflect on your word today. Lord, we pray that you have taken your word and applied it to someone's life today. God, we thank you for the many teachers, the many preachers, the many pastors that are out in this world doing what is right. God, we pray today, God, that us as teachers and preachers and pastors that will never take for granted the ability that you've given us to share your word. And God, we pray that we'll never make it about us, but God, that we'll make it all about you. For without you, we are nothing. For without you, we can do nothing. And all these things we ask in Christ's name, amen. Thank you so much again for listening to the podcast today. Feel free to send me an email at pastorsmith387 at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on YouTube, feel free to reach out, comment on there, subscribe to my channel, take a look um, at the different things that I have on YouTube. One of the things that I've done over the last few weeks is I've been uploading my sermons on YouTube. And I hope that uh, you can take some time and watch those. It has been a blessing to be able to share the gospel around the world on YouTube. Uh, it's been a blessing to be able to be here on uh, where we do Spreaker with the uh, Just the Bible Will Do podcast. Uh, looks like we're in Mississippi, Georgia. Last month, we reached Mississippi, Georgia, Virginia, Texas, and North Carolina. Listen, if you are listening in any of those states tonight, please feel free to send me an email. Let me know how you found the podcast. Um, I noticed Texas has been on here the last few months, and um, it has been, uh, and I know Georgia has been, Virginia has been, Mississippi has been, 
and uh, let me know how you found the podcast. Let us know. Uh, let us know how you have enjoyed listening to the podcast, and um, let us know what you've learned from it. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had a young man reach out to me, not about my podcast, but about something else I do online. He said, "Preacher, I just want to let you know that I've gave my heart and my life to Christ, and I thank God that is God made a promise to us that His Word will not." and cannot return void. And I'm grateful to God for that. And um, it's amazing what God can do if you and I will just step back out of the way and say, Lord, it's all about you. It's nothing that I've done, but God, it's all about what you are going to do and what you have done. And we're grateful to see the work of God in our lives and what God's going to do in the upcoming days. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, Feel free to share with your friends, with your family. Uh, Spread the word about the podcast. Uh, Again, you can reach me by email, pastorsmith387 at gmail.com. You can reach me on YouTube if you follow me on YouTube. Um, You can reach me through many various ways. Again, thank you so much for listening. Remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Until we meet again, have a great week. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.